Greetings, Groovy Geographers. Uh, this demo video is to show you how to read a topographic map. So a topographic map is a specific kind of map that is to show the topography or the ups and downs of a landscape. As you can see, I've got Norway as my background right now. These are the fjords in Norway, lots of very high ups and very, lots of very deep downs. If you go beneath the water here, it's as far down as it is as it goes high up. Um, but if you were to see that on a map, how would you know that this is a very mountainous landscape um, on a flat map? And we would use something called a topographic map using isolines. So I'm going to go ahead and share um, an example in San Francisco, since that's where I'm located. I'm using TopoZone, which is a free to um, uh, it's a free to topographic map website. You might have um, paper ones that you have. Some um, government offices still have paper ones available, but uh, it's easier for me to draw on a screen here. Um, so TopoZone, you want to make sure you select for the specific one here. Make sure you select Topo Map here. It has lots of other map styles, um, depending on what it is that you're looking for and whatnot. But uh, we specifically want Topo Map. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and zoom in to um, the Presidio. This is a dated map. Um, the Presidio is no longer a military base. It is now a part of the Gold Gate National Recreation Area, which you can see written here, but some of the landscapes have changed. Okay, so an isoline is a line along which every point has the same value. And you can see looking at this map here, there are lots of lines everywhere, right? Uh, we're not worried about the colors for now, but all these lines is telling you what the elevation of, of that point is. And if you're familiar with San Francisco, you know San Francisco is very hilly. And so some parts of the city, the lines are very close together. So if you've ever been to Mount Sutro, if you've been to Buena Vista Park, um, certainly if you've been to some of the more um, urban areas, right? Um, you'll see how close these lines are together in areas that are steeper. So an isoline is a line along which every point has the same value. If you have a straight line marked 50, that means every single point on that line is 50. If you have a straight line marked 75, every single point along that line is 75, so on and so forth. Okay, so if, if we see this one right here, you'll see the number 300. It's connected to this thicker, darker line, all right? That means that every single point along this um, line is equal to 300. And because this is an American map, I'm going to guess it's in feet. I could be wrong. Um, but the United States tends to use feet instead of meters. Um, so if you can follow this line all the way around. Um, that means all those little points are equal to 300. We'll say feet for simplicity. 300 feet, okay? You'll also see a line right here that says 200. That means that every point along this line is 200. This one here also is 200. So every point along this line is 200, okay? So already you can kind of get an idea of the landscape. We've got 200 and a 300 and a 200. That's gonna tell you that this point here is probably some sort of a hill. If you've got 200 going up to a 300, right? Again, if you've been to San Francisco, you know that there's lots of hills in the Presidio, okay? So um, that's great. We know that these darker lines, right, have labels on them, which makes life easy. But what if you're trying to find something that's not on one of the darker lines? Because look at all of these thinner lines. And I'll change my color. We'll change it up to, I don't know, purple. Why not? Um, these thinner lines don't have labels. And you're like, well, what do I do about trying to find um, whatever that is, it like probably a pond of some sort or mountain lake or um, the cemetery. None of those are on a, a line. How do you find the value of that? So we have to find something called the contour interval. The contour interval, we can't have every single inch have a line. That'd be lots and lots of lines and you wouldn't be able to read it. It's already very hard to read, right? So how do we have a set number of how many feet or meters, depending on your map, is in between each line. And that is your contour interval. So if I look at, this one's 200 and this one's 300. And those are the, the thicker lines. You go, I'll erase this here. You can see how much thicker these are, right? A little back to red, it's easier to see, whoops. Right, so you can see between 200 and 300, 
300 minus 200 is 100. Again, we'll say feet just because I'm assuming it's because it's American. Um, it should be meters, but I didn't get a vote. <laughs> All right. So I know between the thicker lines, we're looking at 100. But for the thinner lines, I'm going to have to do some counting. So if I start at my 200, I know I'm going to go a total of 100 units. I'm going to go one, two, three, four lines. So I had to jump four lines to travel 100 feet. If I do 100 feet divided by four lines, that tells me that one line equals 25 feet, right? So again, if I'm going from trying to find more spots, this is the easiest, to, they're closest together. Um, you're going between two, so again, there's four lines here. So one, two, three, four. Do you see how then that means that each of these smaller lines is going to be a 25 foot interval. So if this line here is 200, and erase all this mess so you can read the numbers a little easier. I do apologize, those of you doing the lab, this, this there's a certain limit to how much you can zoom in on this map, um, which is uh, not fun, but um, it's kind of our limit for an online map. So if this is 200, this is going to be 225, 250, 275, 300. Which then leads us to then think, okay, 325, 350, 375, right? So, um, which kind of marks this 370 right here is going to correspond to this spot right here. And you can see it's in between my 375 and my 350 mark. So, 370. You're not going to get the measurement to the exact foot. Um, those of you who are taking the lab class with me, there's a range I'll accept. So, if I'm asking you for something, you know, in the exact answer is 263.4 and you put 265, that's fine, <laughs> right? Um, like all maps, you have to make generalizations in order to be able to, to make things manageable and usable. And that's one thing we do here is we're going to limit how much counting we make you do, okay? So um, now I've determined that based on my map of San Francisco, the city of San Francisco, my contour interval is going to be 25 feet. Now that can change, right? So that's just the Presidio. If I scroll down this way into the avenues, right? And I wanted to find, for example, Argonne Playground or Fulton Playground, the numbers might be different. So for example, here, I love these numbers here. I've got a 140, I've got a 125, I've got a 130. So that's a good clue of, oh, things are changing. I should do some recalculations. Um, for the most part, you're going to say it's consistent, but just when you get into urban areas, things change because generally people don't like traversing urban hills. <laughs> As someone who lives in San Francisco for many years, I can attest to that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do an example of one together, okay? Um, your lab is going to be, of course, finding all sorts of different places all over the peninsula. So we'll do one together so you can see what I'm looking for. We're going to go ahead and look for the Public Health Service Hospital, which I think is now apartments. I'm not positive. I know there are apartments over here. But again, this used to be a military base. Um, let's go ahead and find our Public Health Service Hospital. So um, we're going to go ahead and find a building to pick a building. So in this case, you could do this building here, this one here. Either of those is fine, um, but there's no numbers nearby. So that's so now how do I find my location for my public health service hospital if there are no numbers nearby? We're gonna look for the nearest number, okay? So there's a hundred over here, but that's in an urban area, so that might not work. Let's see what else we have, a 300 over here. Okay, that's good to know. I still have my 200 here. And once you kind of find some of your numbers, you're going to follow those lines along until you find uh, where they lead. So let's go ahead and look at my 200 line, okay? Remember that the thicker lines are the ones that are labeled. So I'm following my 200 line, following my 200 line. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I've see here's my 200 line all the way through here. Um, my buildings are not on the 200 line. So therefore they are not at 200, right? Okay, let's do the same for my 100 line here. So I'm following my 100 line, following along. Do to do, following, following, following. It's going to have a nice little curve through here. Okay, 
So I've got my 200 line is here, my 100 line is here. So I'm getting smaller, right? I've got a 100, I've got a 200. So it looks like this, I'm going down or, I've, or going, if, if I'm at my public health service hospital and going towards the golf course, I'm going up in elevation. If I'm standing up at the golf course and I'm going down towards the public health hospital, I'm going down elevation, okay? So I've got 200 here, I've got 100 here. So I'm pretty sure we're closest to 100. Let's go ahead and erase our 200 line just to make our life a little bit easier. So now we're focusing on this 100, okay? So it's not on my 100 line. So I'm not gonna say it's 100. What's the next thinnest line down? I see a very thin line through here. Well, if my contour interval was 25 feet and I'm at 100 and I minus one contour interval, which is 25 feet, 100 minus 25 is 75. That tells me that my public service health hospital is probably about 75 feet in elevation. Again, this exercise is mainly to get you to look at um, using topographic maps. Um, there is a range I would accept. So for example, this these buildings here are directly on the line. So 75 is a nice safe bet, um, but you also could just as easily go to something like, um, well, like the, the um, pond here. It's probably a reservoir of some sort. It's nice and square. Usually ponds aren't square in nature. <laughs> so if I'm starting my 300 and I go 325, 350, 375. Okay, so it's not in the 375 line. When you get to a peak of something and you see there's no 400 line. So it can't be at 400 because there's no 400 line, but it's above the 375 line. So what I do is I say, okay, it's higher than 375, but it's less than 400. We usually take half the contour interval and add it to that next half. <laughs> so if I'm at 375, half of 25 is 12.5. So 375 plus 12.5 is math, that's 387.5, something like that, right? That's a good, nice estimation, right? Again, if you were, you know, building an, an engineering structure in here, you would need to do actual on the ground me measurements. You need, you need to ground truth. But for this, that's not an approximation, okay? Um, so I hope that helps. And again, don't focus too much on, you know, feet versus meters. I'm more interested in you on this specific one is that the practice of finding your larger numbers calculating your contour intervals and then following those lines until you get an estimation. And again, there's a range I'll accept. Okay. Um, thank you so much and have fun.